Hello, my name is Dr. Heidi Lindsay, subject matter expert for statistics here at Cengage Learning. I have had the pleasure of teaching in a variety of classrooms for more than 10 years, with seven of them teaching statistics in higher education. I am very excited to tell you that after extensive development process, our statistical analysis and learning tool, also known as SALT, is available in WebAssign or standalone for your statistics course. SALT was created to intuitively help your introductory students deeply engage with data manipulation, data analysis, and statistical inference without getting bogged down in complex computation. SALT can also be used during classroom lectures to bring to life various statistical concepts. We have worked hard to develop SALT to make it easy to use, yet powerful enough to support the scope and content in an introductory statistics course. Let's take a look. We have several preloaded datasets of SALT for anyone to use, and we'll be adding more over time. You can also upload your own dataset. Select Upload Your Data, click Browse, select a common separated file, and click Open. After opening a dataset, whether it is one of our preloaded datasets or one you want to upload, SALT will prompt you to select which variables it will read in and define whether the variable is numerical or categorical. I'll select broadband access and household income. SALT has determined that broadband access is categorical, but it allows me to easily define whether household income is defined as numerical or categorical. After clicking Select, SALT takes me back to the dataset page and displays my data. There is a column for row labels, a column for broadband access, and a column for household income. Navigating to the Descriptive Statistics page, we find the summary statistics which SALT automatically computes. There is a summary table for numerical variables and a separate summary table for categorical variables. The tables will default to display the most common summary statistics for each variable type, such as mean, standard deviation, and sample size or proportion of yes and proportion of no responses. On the left-hand menu, you can select which statistics to display or not to display. Navigating to the Charts and Graphs page, we can create a visual display of the data. On the left-hand menu, I'll select Household Income to see it visualized as a histogram. It is easy to change the bin width and starting value. I'll start the x-axis at 0 and set bin width to 20,000 and recalculate bins. Notice there is one observation that appears to be way out on the right tail above 300,000. Maybe I need to remove this outlier, redraw my graph, and obtain new summary statistics. I'll return to the dataset page locate the outlier and delete it. When I return to the Charts and Graphs page, SALT has already redrawn the histogram and recalculated the summary statistics. Conveniently, I can also see summary statistics for household income on this page without returning to the Descriptive Statistics page. Changing the graph type is as easy as selecting the option above the graph pane. We can easily create a grouped box plot by adding the categorical variable. However, SALT requires me to select the correct type of variable appropriate for each graph before drawing it. Perhaps we wanted to test whether the mean household income for this sample of 409 households is different from 50,000. We can perform a one sample t-test on the inferential statistics page. SALT has several procedures to select from. One sample T is the default and SALT has imported the numerical variable, household income, from my uploaded dataset and populated the summary statistics. Notice I could perform the hypothesis test or calculate a confidence interval by selecting one of these radio buttons. The hypothesized mean is 50,000 and our alternative is two-sided. We could have selected a different alternative hypothesis if needed. The test results are displayed in the right panel after I click Generate Results. The header confirms the hypothesis statement and the table provides relevant summary statistics, including the test statistic and p-value. 
In case you were wondering, SALT does not require the presence of a dataset to perform a hypothesis test. If summary statistics for a dataset are known, I still can run a test or calculate a confidence interval. I'll perform a one sample proportion Z test. SALT has noticed that broadband access on my dataset could be used for this test, but I want to test on a variable that is not part of the uploaded data. I'll remove broadband access by clicking on this X and then enter number of successes as 395, number of trials as 1097, hypothesized proportion of 0.38, and set the alternative for left tail. The test results are displayed on the right after clicking generate results. Again, the header confirms the hypothesis statement and SALT provides the test summary including the test statistic and p-value. Computing a confidence interval is as easy as selecting confidence interval, entering the desired confidence level, and clicking generate results. The output appears on the right panel. Another feature we have included in SALT is the distribution calculator for the most common distributions used in introductory statistics. Let's explore the normal distribution calculator, which defaults to the standard normal, but it is easy to shift and scale the distribution as needed. Let's explore a normal distribution with mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15, and find the probability that x is less than 75, or the probability that x is greater than 115, or even the probability that x is between 70 and 120. What value cuts off the top 10% or the lower 10%? We have included a second horizontal axis to show the connection between the x values and their z-scores. Perhaps a student is learning about partitioning areas in the distributions. The slider dynamically adjusts the shaded area and populates the numbers in the probability statement. Perhaps during the class lecture, you wanted to help students visualize finding a critical value in the t-distribution with 19 degrees of freedom on a two-tailed test with alpha of 0.05. SALT supports student exploration of this and other statistical concepts. Our coding team has also been busy integrating SALT with homework problems in WebAssign so SALT can help students develop their statistical thinking. Here is one such problem. Students are presented with a multivariate data set of 36 fast food items, including the variables of fat, sodium, and calories. The task for this problem is to create three different scatter plots and describe the relationship between the graphed variables. I'm excited to demonstrate how SALT is available in WebAssign to support students with statistical tasks such as this one that can be cumbersome. Clicking on the orange link results in a new SALT tab opening in the web browser with the dataset transferring automatically. Students are even notified of successful data transfer from WebAssign into SALT. Now, a scatter plot can be drawn on the charts and graphs page, but I have already shown you this page Instead, I would like to show you SALT's regression page. Let's define sodium as the explanatory variable and calories as the response variable for a linear model. Not only has SALT drawn a scatter plot, but SALT also provides confidence bands, scatter plot of residuals, a model summary including the least squares regression line, and hypothesis tests on the model coefficients. One more thing. SALT is also fully compatible with Lockdown Browser in WebAssign, making SALT available for testing as well. Thank you for watching this video. SALT will continue to evolve in both features and functionality over time. If you have questions about SALT, please reach out to your Cengage account executive or visit webassign.com salt.